where Tremont Mark was the best player in today's game against East Carolina. But real quick, before we focus on Mark, I do want to focus on Marcus. And like you said, that's turned ankle that he suffered towards the 13 minute mark in the first half, where for those two minutes, I know, Chris, you said you went back and you saw that it was just a rolled ankle and kind of, you know, when it came to, to where you weren't so much worried about it. But initially when it happened here on the court, you could tell, you could see the pain in Marcus Sasser's face. Uh, Calvin Sampson went up to check on Sasser, John Houston and Alan Bishop, both of whom are on the staff on the Houston Cougars. They had to help him into the locker room. Now it turned out that he just went toward the back to be able to get retaped with John Houston. He was back two minutes later, but... Yeah, that was the biggest area for concern for those two minutes. Houston Cougar fans were kind of maybe not having flashbacks, but they were certainly worrying about Marcus Sasser, obviously, of course, what happened last season with uh, the senior guard. Yeah, I wasn't worried that he injured his foot again. I was concerned that he hurt his knee. That was my concern. But when I rewound it and realized he just really rolled, turned the ankle, I was I was like, OK, you know, if it's, it's a week or so, so be it. But uh, then John Houston is just a, a medicine man. <laughs> so he does what he does, retape the ankle and, and sprinkle some John Houston dust on it. And Marcus came back in the game. So there we go. Yeah, and he played well tonight. I, I think he looked really good. I think when I was watching the game, it stood out to me, of course, is the, the level of intensity they play with on the defensive end. And one thing I was watching and thinking about it, when I watch other teams, you often see times where someone has a defensive lapse and they'd be like, my bad, my bad. You rarely see Houston do that, especially on defense. If it happens, it'll happen on offense. But on defense, they're locked in and they're in sync in unison. And, and that's one thing that really stood out to me. Like every play, that every pass that they had, every everything Houston was there on, just on defense, making it tough for them. And, and that's kind of been consistent throughout the whole year. And, like, no matter who's having a really good offensive game, the defense is what is why Houston has the record that they have. It's because of the defense. And tonight it came out, and they were just on lockdown, just locking everything. They were just on everything. <laughs> Nothing worked for East Carolina to start the game. <laughs> No, and that defense, it was suffocating. And I think the, I tweeted this out uh, kind of verbatim. I said, the stat of the night, at halftime, East Carolina had three made field goals. They went Man. over 10, 10 minutes and 50 sec, 56 seconds of game action where they did not score a single field goal to end the first half going into halftime. And only three made field goals going into halftime. Houston had five blocks. They had more blocks than ECU had field goals. And really what kept the Pirates – within I can't not striking distance within a respectable range uh, from a uh, score standpoint was the foul trouble that the Houston Cougars were in and and really the tight whistle that the officials were calling which even in the second half when East Carolina finally broke the drought I think Houston opened the second half on a 12-3 run that built a 23 point lead and then after that it kind of got maybe not got away but you, the defense kind of started to to see more more slip-ups but I mean, yeah, absolutely. Like you said, Dayon, it seemed like there was just a different speed, and it didn't matter top to bottom. It was Emmanuel Sharp had a great block on a on a fast break where it seemed like East Carolina was going to have a layup opportunity. Jamal Shedd was active in the passing lines. Marcus Sasser transition, like you said, you rolled his ankle. You couldn't tell by whenever you start seeing him run in transition. After that, he was just flying all over the place. And he had once again, it does it at least once a game now when it comes to the signature yeah. Euro step, but. Jarris Walker was active in the passing lanes and being able to contest shots. Jawan Roberts got it going, in, especially in the second half when he started tracking down rebounds. Offensive rebounds were kind of, I don't think you can see it from, from Houston maybe not missing as much, but it kind of flipped the switch in the second half when it came to Houston being able to offensive rebound the ball, and particularly Jawan Roberts, who had seven, I believe, at the end of the game. I mean, ECU shot 50 percent 52 percent in the second half and still lost the second half <laughs> i mean the cougs outscored them 40 38 in the second half so yeah kind of followed up a dismal three for 25 first half shot better in the second half and still lost the second half so i mean the cougs are just a better team more talented salute to ecu for for not giving up not rolling over and quitting and salute to the crowd. The crowd was spectacular for <laughs> for the first 
five minutes or so when it was a close game, they were loud. And even when Houston built up the lead, it, there was still energy. When when East Carolina went on a run and cut it to 16, it was, it was loud. Like, this is probably one of the best atmospheres across uh, for road games this season that Houston has had to play in. Like, honestly. Another thing I was thinking about in regards to how the referees were calling it tight, Houston – has been in foul trouble like J1 of recent who we think about a lot. They got to watch that because I was thinking about against Villanova. I mean, Andy was sitting right there and how tight they were calling it. And so Houston, that's something that could plague Houston going forward. But they do have the depth, although it's young depth who players can. But I think in any given game, Houston has to be mindful of the referees and how they're calling the game and adjust it because it, it can affect Houston with how hard they play on defense because oftentimes they make contact. Not all contact in basketball is a foul, but it's up to discretion of the, of the ref. But, man, Houston looked good. Charmon, he had he was the best player out there for Houston tonight. I, I agree with Coach Samson when he said that because it, he just put on full display his offensive arsenal. I think early he knocked down a couple threes, and then he started showing his playmaking ability, and which just adds to his offensive arsenal. Arsenal because he can score on all three levels with the three, the mid range, and he can get inside and get into his floater game. And so, and then once he he got into his bag, he just started making more plays, and he was really comfortable. The coach Samson started running the offense through him. He started handling the ball and bringing the ball up and like and playing him a lot in pick and roll. And so, I, I think if he can continue being efficient like he's been of recent along with what Jamal and Marcus and everyone's going to bring you uh, consistently on any given night, I mean, Houston is peaking for sure. I, th- I think one thing defensively since January, the team is going for more pump fakes than they did yeah. in, in non-conference. They're Especially when it comes to yeah. closing out. Even on closing out, sometimes they'll fly by. You know, Juan, Jairus, Terrence, Emmanuel, they gotta, they gotta, you know, cut that out because if you are out of position, you're off balance, then you start reaching with your hands, and you make it easy for ref to call a foul there if you go for the pump fake. So that's, you know, it, it's an important thing to to correct. We saw the zone defense was not good. The lack of communication down the stretch for in the zone, they don't do it. They don't play zone a lot. So which is yeah. something that you know Apollo kind of points out. Yeah, that was that was an issue, not a concern, is an issue. And also, I think the guys are tired. This is the third game this week <laughs> for the mm-hmm. team. This week. And defense, you know, down the stretch, the game was the game was never in doubt. In the second half, you know, ECU was shooting the ball better, but the game wasn't in doubt. So I think they were tired and got a little bored on defense as well. <laughs> so that won't be that won't be an issue. It should not be an issue come tournament and postseason play. 